Hi, I'm Latanya G. Hilton, and you're watching The Silently Loud Confessions on YouTube. Stay tuned. Today's message is a message of love. We're going to talk about those people out there who most people think are beneath them. I just need to tell you, when you're loving, you see things a little differently than other people. And I think that, well, I'll put it to you this way. I was one of those people at one point who were beneath people. And I have to tell you that working at a fast food restaurant does not make you a stupid person. So, you just need to know a few things about that. Now, I'm going to talk about a place like places like McDonald's, Kentucky Fried Chicken, and um, Sonic, and places like that. Now, you know how you go into a McDonald's and while you're going into that place you you see all these people rushing around and you're going in there and you're wondering what kind of experience you're going to have and you're late you know as it is because you left a little later for lunch this time and you've spent some of your time like five to eight minutes of your time already and you're like, oh my goodness, I only have like 20 some minutes left, oh no, what am I going to do? So you go up to the counter, you order your food, and they get it out to you blindingly fast. And you're a little worried because you had a special burger. You sit down and, oh my goodness, your plain burger has ketchup on it. And you're freaking out, and you go up to the counter, and you say really mean, nasty words to the cashier, like it's the cashier's fault, like they made the burger for you, and they're being as nice as they can, and they're trying to, you know, be as patient with you as they can, um, you're like the 20th or 30th person who's had a, had a problem um, during lunch, and I just have to give you a little bit of insight on what goes on in a place like that. Well, you got the cashier who's typing in everything, and there's this huge screen thing here and these push button things and they have all these little abbreviations and stuff and you have to remember all the little abbreviations and stuff because and they're too small to put the whole thing on there so you have to remember the abbreviations and remember where things are and so you're ringing it up and when you're new it's really hard um, but after you get the hang of it it's really easy okay then you go in the kitchen you know there's all these it used to be when I worked there it used to be Ticket City, you know, they, okay, here comes another ticket at the end of the thing, and you have to keep yourself focused on the right ticket. One person might be working on one ticket, you might be working on another ticket. So you got to focus on the proper ticket. And so, if you're short like me, you're looking way up here, you know, you know. And so sometimes, your eyes kind of cross over to something else, because you're trying to rush and do it at the same time. And... You'll sit there and you try to, you know, make sure that it's all there, but maybe you got the wrong ticket, and maybe you pre-marked the package as a certain type of burger, like plain, and maybe your eyes crossed over to a burger that was not plain, because, you know, while you're doing this, there's people talking and barking orders and everything all around you. And so, you know, you turn and you look, somebody's talking to you about something, you're getting distracted. So these people are being told 
to hurry up and they've got to be perfect at it. And we all know, the Bible teaches us that we all fall short. Marvelous Master, I come to thee, wicked and lonely, and longing to be. I've done some things. So people expecting them to be perfect, you're being unrealistic. Come on. Anyway, in a place like that, you know, anybody should know by now that when you rush around, there's going to be some mistakes somewhere. So, not everybody can do an, a perfect job all the time when you are in a fast-paced world. And so, naturally, you understand what happened there with that burger. You know, somebody put ketchup on it, wrapped it in the wrong wrapper, and it got given to somebody that it wasn't supposed to go to. So, that's an honest mistake. It happens. Cut them some slack. They are in a whirlwind of stuff. When the lunch rushes come in, there's like noise in the, the drive through and all that. And it's just crazy, crazy, crazy wild. And in the drive through you know, you've got all these things coming at you. And you've got to trust that what's in that bag is really what you needed for that customer. And sometimes you're the one that, you know, goes and gets the stuff for the customer and that makes it easier. But sometimes you can't do that. Sometimes one person has to make the drinks and the other person has to make the food in order to make everything go smoothly. So there's lots of running around going on. Sometimes accidents happen, people bumping into each other, knocking fries everywhere, you know, and it's all honest mistakes. And all those people, they're stressed out to to beyond belief. I mean, you all should be nice to those people. They work hard for you to get you that fast food. They work hard. And it's very stressful. And unless you have Jesus on your side and can talk with him and, ha and ask him to help you get through that day, you might want to go home and pull every strand of your hair out and have nothing but plugs in your head and scabs in your hair because you are just so stressed out. And so... You can imagine how disappointed they feel. They get that little teensy check. And, you know, at first when you're a young kid, a teenager, at first it's like exciting. Oh, look, $30. Woo! But after a while it's like, huh? Didn't I? How many hours did I work? And, you know, things happen. But anyways... Not that they only get $30, mind you, but I can't, you know, tell people's wages and stuff. Anyway, the thing of it is, they work really hard, and the cashier gets a lot of the heat for everything that goes wrong, even though the cashier only rang up the stuff, and they rang it up right, because they read it back to you and everything, and you hear that they rang it up right. So... You know, it just gets kind of cross back there. Now, nowadays, I think they have like the digitized um, what's next and everybody works on the one order at a time so as to get it out a lot smoother and all. And sometimes you may not have a problem with that. But sometimes, sometimes, yikes for sure. So the next time you go into a McDonald's and you look around, why don't you just love on them and be as patient as you can? See, look, you get to practice patience. And you get to practice forgiving. And I didn't even tell you the half of what happens in that place. Crazy. But they manage to make it look like they're way organized. Isn't that funny? Anyway. Then, there's everybody's non-favorite. The telemarketer. Now, my experience working as a telemarketer. We have to learn how to read things really fast and sometimes you start out a little slow and you realize if you don't go a little faster you don't get anything said that you need to have said and you get a lot of heat from your boss oh you should learn to read faster or 
learn to do it this way or whatever, you know. So, you know, it's really hard. And um, they tell you to stay scripted, even with the rebuttals and all this kind of stuff. So your hands are tied. And there's always these people who want you to step outside of the, the um, scripts and stuff. And if we do that, we get fired. Now, you all should appreciate these people because they are bringing you wonderful services if they are a legit company. And, you know, there are those companies that are not so legit naturally. Naturally, you don't like those people, but for the most part, um, people are, you know, hard workers and they do it legitly. And they have to go by the book. And there's all these rules that you can't step outside of. So when you ask somebody to stop being scripted, you're telling them to not do their job and get fired. That's what you're really saying. And uh, those of you who are frustrated, you know, it happens during lunch time or, or breakfast or dinner and you're mad. Don't get mad. We don't get to control when you get that call because, see, basically it's like an automated thing. So the call comes to us, there's a beep and then we hear you say hello and then we start speaking to you so it's really hard on us when somebody who says they don't want their time all wasted stays on the phone with us to yell in our ears like we're imbeciles now instead of standing in the welfare, welfare line we decided to get a job like a lot of people like to tell people we got a job. We're feeding our families. And we're doing a legit job. Most of us. There's some, like I said, there's some whack jobs out there. But that's to be expected. For every good organization, there's one that's not so good. So that's to be expected. So what do you do? You ask questions to find out what's happening. Okay? And sometimes you can nip everything in the bud by telling your credit card company or something um, to put your name on a do not call list or or take your name off of a call list or something you can stop all that by doing that and uh, and the more you do that you know because they have to do that they have to listen to you about that you stop wasting their time and yours see funny story is let me do a little demonstration for y'all See, I need something. Well, we'll just use this. This is the imaginary phone. Okay, we'll put the mouthpiece where it goes. Okay, here we go. This is this is you. This is all of you dealing with the telemarketer. This is something you can do to cut down the stress. Okay. Hello? There's a little bit of pause. Hello, you say? You still don't hear anything? Click. There you go. Now, how hard was that? Not hard at all. Or, let's just say, you say hello, and somebody, somebody answers and says, Hello, can I speak to such and such and such a person? And you say, this is she. And they start unloading a spiel of words into your, into your head and ear. And so, naturally... If you are not interested, you can say, Oh, I'm sorry, I'm not really interested. Can you put my name on a do not call list? Thank you, have a nice day. Click. Now that didn't take very long at all, did it? No. And so your food that you were angry about getting disrupted, because, uh, you know, I can understand you're in, you know, spoons right here, you're hungry as I don't know what, you're getting ready to go like that, and the telephone rings, you're anticipating that it's somebody from your job that's important call. So of course, of course, you get there and it's a telemarketer, so you're mad. Just hang up the phone. You don't have to say anything. We telemarketers like it when you do that, rather than getting on the phone and cussing us out when we are just doing our job. And we are, you know, normal people who have children that need to be fed so we're doing a job and it's a very stressful very hard job to do and when you get a cell it's like a big old celebration and everything 
because you get bonuses and you get to take your kids out to McDonald's. Anyway, the next time you see a fast food restaurant servant or the next time you get a telephone marketing call, remember the ways that you can love on them. You know, stop wasting their time. Don't cuss them out just because you want somebody to cuss out. Take it to God in prayer if you feel that intense. Learn to love. You know, because God commanded us to love. Stretch foot by lazy hands. Reach. Until you favor God's command. He didn't give us a choice. He didn't say, okay, my children, you can love if you want to. You don't have to, you know. He never said that. He never said that. He commanded us to love. So what are we to do? Love. And a way that we can love a telemarketer is stop wasting their time. Time is money to them. They have children to feed. Hang up the phone and let somebody who does want that promotion, does want that offer, let them deal with them, okay? It's not that hard. I just had to tell you that. Now, Mother's Day just passed by and everything, and some people, they don't know if they even care to say Happy Mother's Day to their mother, maybe, because maybe their mother was a horrible, horrible, grouchy nag, and they did not want to see her be happy, but just see her be humbled in some way. But I have to tell you, the very act of going through labor is worth 25 or more years of Happy Mother's Day. So the next time you see your mom and you think the worst of her, remember that she went through hard labor with you and even if she went through having a cesarean section, surgery can hurt like you know what. Just too much. And so, it wasn't easy having you, it wasn't easy bringing you up, and some mothers, they are not quite the picture of innocence, they do things they ought not to do, but that's why God told us to learn forgiveness, and if we just do that, it keeps us from getting worse and worse angry, and pretty soon you find yourself being just as grumpy as the one that you were thinking was not right. So... We have to learn to help each other and see if I forget these little things I'm telling you, please remind me because we got to be the iron sharpening the iron. Right, people? Well, that's it for today's message. I hope you learned a lot and I hope it blesses your life richly. And always remember, read your Bible every single day because it's like, it's like a wardrobe. Without it, you're naked. Wear it. You know, read it. Ingest it because it is in your best interest. It helps you deal with the world out there that's always fast paced. It's never slowing down. But if you have Jesus by your side and the truth in your heart, you're better able to maneuver about. That being said, we'll see you next time. And this has been a silently loud confession. Thank you. Bye-bye.